recently added two new dormitories with 144 beds. They did so without the proper zoning, and the council two weeks ago denied the change the county requested. As a compromise, the city granted a special permit, one that will also allow for future projects at the annex. Council members Mary Rhodes and Leo Guerrero voted against the move. And state news, a former Elvis impersonator who admitted killing at least five people was executed in Huntsville early today. 44-year-old James Pastor became the third Texas inmate put to death this year. He received the death sentence for the 1980 contract killing of a Houston man. And back here, a woman who pleaded guilty to a pair of brutal stabbing deaths back in 1981 was given a 35-year prison sentence yesterday. 27-year-old Cynthia May was one of three people who took part in the stabbings at the Osaka Massage Parlor on Way Out Weber. She was originally given a 50-year sentence, but part of her plea bargain agreement was that she would not receive a longer prison sentence than one of her co-defendants. Recently, one co-defendant sentence was reduced to 35 years because of a technicality, forcing May's resentencing. She will now be eligible for parole in three to four years. American Airlines of Fort Worth has set up a relief effort to help groups carry supplies to Caribbean areas damaged by Hurricane Hugo. A discount fares have been established for those traveling from the East Coast to help people living in areas affected by the hurricane. Locally, the Red Cross is asking for donations to help buy some badly needed supplies. If you would like to help, you can call 1-800-453-9000 or mail your check or money order to Hurricane Hugo, P.O. Box, 3088, that's in Corpus Christi, and the zip code is 78463. This coming Saturday is Texas Coastal Cleanup Day, with state officials urging Texas Texans to help scour the sand. All 172 miles of accessible beach will be cleaned. The Texas effort is part of the Tech Pride Gulf Wide Volunteer Cleanup Project that also includes Mississippi, Louisiana, Alabama, and Florida. Locally, if you want to help on Saturday, you can go to one of the following locations, Malachite Beach Visitor Center, the Holiday Inn on Padre Island, Rockport Beach Park, or Avenue G at the beach at Port Aransas. This, of course, starts on 8 o'clock this coming Saturday, so jot it down. Turning to our forecast now, like I mentioned, we do have a 20% chance of showers in the forecast. Otherwise, today, partly cloudy, warm temperatures climbing to around 90 degrees in the inland. And the wind will be out of the northeast this morning at 5 to 10. And later this morning, the wind will shift to the east at 10 to 20. Tonight, partly cloudy with a low of 72 degrees. Currently out there, we do have partly cloudy skies, a nice 77. Have a great morning. Kathleen? Thank you, Esther. Joining us this morning, Tom Hunt. Good morning, Tom. How are morning. you today? Fine. Are you pleased with the uh, yeah. ethics code? Are we down done? Can we move on to something else I now? Th I think we have and we should. Uh, yes, I believe that everybody was in agreement that this was a very good ethics code. There was a little glitch on file a citizen filing a complaint, but they resolved that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yes, we should move on. It's, it's, it suffices. And I might add that we do have a state ethics code, but this is stronger. And that's fine with me. I, I'll tell them anything. If this had been in existence five years ago, would we have seen the Frank Mendez case? Would those things have been precluded? Would people have been more clear as to what they could or couldn't have done? I'm not sure, Catherine, really, whether... I, yes, I guess. Uh, uh, probably that wouldn't have come up, the Mendez uh, Because it would have incident. been clearer to him, do you think, that's what correct. he could or couldn't do? That's correct. I think it would have been clearer. And, and it, it, we, we would have had uh, the information on file as to his, you know, the amount of business done mm -hmm. and so forth. So it could very well have precluded that incident. Okay, courthouse, that seems to be in the news again, has been since, what, 76, is that, or Around 77? 77, yes. Charles Bennett bought it, he was going to turn it into a mall, and then tough times hit Texas, and I guess Mr. Bennett, and we didn't, we didn't build it. So what now, the council wants to tear it down, or uh, what's the feeling I, I, on I think that? the majority uh, want the council, I mean, want the courthouse to come down. Who? Well, give me a uh, Well, uh, I believe Cliff, Cliff, well, I hate to, to speak for somebody else, but I've heard sure. comments and I'd hate to put a name on it, but I, just the general consensus I've felt mm -hmm. that they, they do want that. See, it's been since 77. We've spent an awful lot of time and resources. Uh, every opportunity's been uh, had to have financing and so forth. It's just not there. And that's an eyesore mm -hmm. to our city. We can't be sparkling with an eyesore like that courthouse coming in off of I. Uh, 37. Now Mary Rhodes is opposed to tearing it down. Yes, and I believe there's one other uh, 
maybe Joe, well, I'm not sure. Okay, but, but in other but words, it's not a, it's good, there's going to be some discussion. Oh, yes. And when I will think that it, come up? Can the council just decide that this is what they want to do? Well, the lawsuit has to be resolved oh, first, I and that's see. next month, I understand. Who sued? Uh, well, uh, there's a lien for taxes uh, against the uh, Charles Bennett and the Sunbelt Savings, I believe. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of involved, really, because we get in the Texas Landmark Commission, because this is a historic uh, landmark and so forth. Mm -hmm. So it kind of gets a little involved. But we've got to get the lawsuit behind us. But I hope that we can resolve that and, and, and tear down that Whose responsibility would, be, would it be to tear it down? Would the city have to well, pay to tear it down? Yeah, probably so, if it ends up, if it's our uh, property. Even though it's private property now, are you yes. saying because they owe income tax on it, the city would foreclose on it? Or what? I well, mean, how would that uh, work? Yes, they have to uh, foreclose with those taxes that are due. And uh, it wouldn't be something we'd want to have, to tell you, too, because it's going to cost a ton gonna of money. I was going to say, Mr. Fiscal Responsibility, right. how much is that going to cost us? I have no idea, but it's going to be a lot. In the hundreds everybody. of thousands, wouldn't yes, you guess? Yes, absolutely. And uh, so it's something we really didn't want to inherit. It's mm -hmm. too bad. I think they give it their best shot. It just didn't come off. What would you put there? What would you do with the property? Well, I'll leave that up to Heart of Corpus Christi. That's what that organization is for, really. Mm -hmm. And I think this would be something that they could... Uh, really take on as a project to come up with uh, some enhancements there that will really will be a benefit to the uh, to, and some revenue also. Okay, one other thing, let's move on. You, you, you and I were talking in the break that there's a group in Corpus Christi called what, what is it called? Future of Corpus Christi. It's a group of young uh, businessmen and uh, they, uh, they had a forum mm -hmm. Monday week uh, at the Corpus Christi Athletic Club. And they're targeting that 65 and over exemption. They sure are, Catherine. And you know, last year, <clears throat> over 12,000 senior citizens benefited from that exemption of $50,000. And I might add that all of that money, which is about, it amounts to about $2.5 million, that money goes right into our economy, buying goods and services, HEB, Lubies, mm -hmm. and so forth. It does give those over 65 a little benefit, and you'd think after 65, Catherine, that they're entitled to that, really. They well, worked hard and long. the future of Corpus Christi organizations who tend to be younger people, what are That's they saying? That's correct. Are they well, they just think it's fair? unfair that they, they're not getting the same thing. And I have to say this. I think our gen younger generation, some, think they should have it now, Catherine. You know, senior citizens worked long, long, long time to accumulate what they have today. And to have that same group, I mean, that young group saying, we want it now, is a little un bit unfair, I think. Or are they saying, and I, I'm really not familiar with what they are saying, but are they perhaps saying that maybe exemptions aren't fair? Everybody that's lives their, in the that's, city. That's their point. They're not it's saying unfair. they want an exemption. They're just saying it's not fair to give 65 and over an ex exemption, who but, may in many senses be more economically sound to, to, to spend money than the younger people that are working with the young families. Well, again, that's been brought up. <clears throat> that the ones on Ocean Drive benefit. But Catherine, they pay more taxes than anybody else. They're entitled to it, too. I don't begrudge they're having their share is also. Is that going to come up? Is it going to be an issue I, that the council I think will after have that, to deal with? I think after the meeting that they had where the senior citizens were represented, they're four to one. Mm -hmm. They got the message, and I don't believe the council will touch it with a 10-foot pole. I really don't, Catherine. And like, like I say, many cities give more than we do. Mm -hmm. San Antonio gives 60000 They have a lower tax rate. Austin gives more. Uh, Dallas. So we're not alone. It's, it's mandated by the state. The amount that's given is up to the city. All but right. this does give the senior citizens a break, and I think they're entitled to it. And I'm one of those two. No. You know, yeah, I hate Hard to, to believe. <laughs> Coming up, a young lady. I'm going to talk to Tom. I asked her how old she was in 1969, 1970. I won't ask you, and I'm not going to say how <laughs> old was. Dana Delaney of China Beach was only 13. We'll talk with her about her hit series here on ABC called China Beach in a Moment. Stay with us. Hi, my name is Alma Vestinais, and I'm a medical assistant student here at CBM Education Center. Hello, my name is Jeannie Clement. I'm a graduate of CBM Education Center, currently working as a dental assistant. I think my education here at CBM is going to prepare me for my future. CBM gave me the training that I needed to prepare me for my job. I'm very happy here at CBM, and I would definitely recommend my friends come here. For dental or medical career training, call CBM Education Center today. It's day one of the $4 million sell on a savings at Paul York, the best time in the past decade to make a buy on a new car or truck. Up to $2,000 cash rebates on 26 models of Toyota, zero down, $139 a month on the truck of the year, the Toyota 4x4 trucks. 
factory invoice price are below. Or all Corollas and Camrys factory invoice price are below. $10,995 for the air-conditioned Camry at Paul York, America's number one family sedan. Right now at Paul York. I like my car, but it's kind of boring. Yeah. It's got to be more like me. Yeah, that's me. Drive to Z-Bart. Find out what your vehicle has to say today at Z-Bart. to Bayfest, Corpus Christi's Family Fun Festival by the Bay, September 29th, 30th, and October 1st. Call 1-800-678-OCEAN for more information. The satellite from Los Angeles, Dana Delaney, and I have to say, Dana, we are so thrilled for your Emmy. Way Thank to go. You. Yeah, I'm happy. How did that feel? I realize now that I was pretty much numb through the whole event. <laughs> it's just hitting me about three days later. Well, when we first talked two years ago, China Beach, I think it had, what, four or five shows in the spring? Mm -hmm. And then was really premiering and, had, and, and beginning its big, big beginning on ABC. Right. Um, what's happened in two years to go from that, a relatively new show, to an Emmy? What do you think? Well, um, there are a lot more details in my life to take care of. <laughs> it's not as simple. But, you know, it, it's funny, doing the show, which is such a grind, you know, it's such a you know, like 14, 18 hour a day. I don't, I'm not aware of the outside world so much. To me, it's just the work, the work, the work. Mm -hmm. So it's not until I get a break that I'm aware of the effect that it's had on my life or on, on other people. Where do you shoot it? There in California? Yeah, uh, we shoot half the time in Warner Brothers Studios and then out on location in Valencia. Now the premiere tonight says you as Colleen McMurphy and is it K K C K C yeah Casey. Mark Helgenberger. You're mm -hmm. you're trapped in a or held by Viet Cong in tunnels. That sounds like a really stressful kind of shoot. It what, was. What, what tell me about it? Well, uh, we built we actually built tunnels on the sound stage that were made of some kind of polyurethane and then filled them with dirt so they were rock hard and we were crawling around on our hands and knees in these claustrophobic tunnels covered with everything possible. Yeah. <laughs> it was it was disgusting. It was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> from a girl from New York City to the tunnels of, of whatever. <laughs> I guess it was supposed to be the tunnels of Da Nang, but the major tunnels were in Coo Chi in Vietnam, which I visited about a year ago myself. I went in the tunnels. What was that like to visit Vietnam? Did you, did you feel like you were going back? Yeah. Um, it was a pretty amazing experience. I... Um, I was affected by it a lot more than I thought I would. The Vietnamese people were wonderful to us, and they really love Americans, and you just feel a lot of guilt for what we did to their country. Did you um, have any medical background at all to be able to play this part? No, I really didn't, but my technical advisor, who was a nurse in Vietnam, is amazed at how quickly I've adapted. I love all the medical stuff, mm -hmm. and now I've gotten to the point where I can do things without even asking her, and I say, is that right? And she says, yes, that's right. Does she really stand there behind the camera and say, grab this suture or stitch it this way? I she mean, did in the beginning. Um, now I've gotten to the point where I can say, well, well, this is what I should be doing here, and this is what I should be doing there, and I, I almost know at this point. It's basic, you know, stuff. We're talking, what, 1969, 1970? Is there a specific, specific target date that China Beach is looking at? Well, we are going chronologically. We're still in 68. We're post-Tet, but we haven't gotten to... We're starting to get to the period where the war is really falling apart and people don't are starting to question why we are there. Mm -hmm. Where were you then? I was, let's see, 69, I was 13, and um, junior high school, I was getting my first kiss. <laughs> <laughs> Do you... Do you reflect back and forth? I mean, do you bring personal experience into that? Do you remember enough, even at 13, the feelings of, that the, this country was going through about Vietnam? Well, as I remember it, it was a television war. I knew nobody who was in Vietnam. And the amazing thing is I went to the wall in Washington this spring for the first time, 
and I did not know one name on the wall, which is incredible mm -hmm. considering how many names are there. Sure. Yeah. Now you have an Emmy. Uh, I mean, what changes for you? I, I guess more and more roles, but you'll stick with China Beach, I hope. Yeah, it's not like getting an Oscar because, you know, my price doesn't go up because I already have a job. Um, <laughs> I'll have to see what happens. I'm not sure. Hopefully, in the hiatus, I'll set something up. We're looking at movie things now. Well, congratulations. We're sure Thank proud you, of you. Thanks. What do you do for fun when you're working a 14-hour day? <laughs> My idea of fun is going by myself to the movies and eating a ton of popcorn <laughs> and, and sitting in the darkness and talking to no one. <laughs> so it really is the girl next door, right? Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. Well, we're glad to see you back on ABC with an Emmy under your belt. Best of luck. We can't Thanks wait to see what's next. Thanks. Bye-bye. Good to see Bye. you again. We'll be back with more. Stay with us. There is something fishy going on at Leisure Time Hobbies, and it is beautiful. Look at what you can do with fun fashion. There's no limit. Leisure Time Hobbies has everything you'll need to become a fun fashion designer, including classes and how-to books. Have some fun and share your beautiful creations with family and friends. Their great gift ideas and the fact that you did it will make the gift even better. All of the fun fashion supplies you'll need are right here, or we have fun for everyone. Leisure Time Hobbies and Gulfway Shopping Center open seven days a week. It's Braslaw's 64th anniversary sale. Right now, save 30% on all Stanley furniture. Plus, no money down and no interest for six full months. Choose from Stanley bedrooms, dining rooms, and all Young American Youth collections in stock or by special order with free delivery. Stanley craftsmen select only the finest materials to create furniture of exceptional quality, durability, and value to last a lifetime. Don't miss Braslaw's 64th anniversary sale on today's most wanted furniture styles. It's going on right now at Braslaw's in Corpus Christi and Alice. It's here at Kremlin Dodge Truck Center, new for 1990, the Dodge Dakota Club Cab. Now enjoy the roomiest extended club cab pickup in its class. The Dakota Club Cab with five full-size adult passenger seating and locking storage compartment. The V6 fuel-injected engine and many more standard options. Plus, fabulous clearance sale prices and factory rebates on all 1989 Kremlin Dodge conversion vans. Full-size wagon, full-size pickup, two- and four-wheel drive. Dodge Dakotas, Ram Chargers, Raiders, and the Ram 50 imports from the good guys at Kremlin Dodge Truck Center. Psychic Mickey Dane has predicted major world events and happenings. Now, she predicts for you. I've got the answer. Call now. Your daily personalized horoscope in one simple phone call. Love, money, health. What kind of day will this be? Call Mickey now and find out. Everything you need to know according to the stars. What can you expect today? Find out. Call Mickey now. And we continue this morning. Suzelle Mendieta is here. She is the assistant station manager of Kaoro, and we welcome you. Good to see you. Nice to see you. Good Thank thing you. today. Something new. The, we media folks are always saying, what's new at Bayfest? This year, new, a product fair. Right. What's sponsored by Kaoro and Lulac. And, Lulac. Uh -huh. and what is a product fair? Well, it's all sorts of products that you can think of. We've got uh, Princess House Crystal on a national level, Del Mar College, U.S. Sprint. It's just a wide range of products. And... Uh, we hope to make this an annual event and help it grow in the future and be a good asset to Bayfest. Sure. Now, it will be going on adjacent to the artist areas, is right. that right? We'll be located in the exhibit hall, mm -hmm. right about 30 feet away from the artist booth so that the flow will keep going through. And, Terrific. Uh, there will be all sorts of giveaways, and so it's going to be exciting. So as you visit Bayfest, you need a little air conditioning. One thing you can go, you can get free samples from the City of Corpus Christi Water Department, I bet you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I had to throw that out. I mean, you know, that would be something simple to do in my promo mind. But this is something that really has come out on what can we do bigger and better? How can we serve more people in the community? Exactly. Will, will you all benefit financially from this? Uh, we will, but all the money will be going towards scholarships. Great. Lack. We're basically just the media end of it. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, We've got the advertising contacts and the local contacts. Well, that's wonderful. So we're looking to build this because it's a brand new thing for everybody. Mm -hmm. Product fairs have met with great uh, uh, support in other cities. Mm -hmm. It's really good for the company. It's their way of advertising things and yes. good for the people because they get to try them, exactly. I guess. Exactly. Large companies like such as Procter & Gamble, for example, they're always looking for the local event. Mm -hmm. 
so we hope for these big companies to take a look at what we're doing and get on board with How it. How much do you hope to raise for the scholarship funds? It's hard to say at this point, uh, being that it's the first year, we'll be doing great to cover our expenses the first year, but mm -hmm. we're hoping to, to build it to something substantial in the future. Well, that's terrific. Yeah. Again, that will be during Bayfest, as you see, we're coming up in, I guess, week from Friday, September the 29th, 30th, October 1st, right there on the Bayfront. It's called a product fair. Right. Again, location, let's just review that It'll one more time. It'll be Hall, near mm -hmm. the artists that are located there at Bayfest. All right, will there be a, a charge to, to enter? No, it's, uh, it's all free, and it's going to be a lot of fun. U.S. Sprint's going to have some games out there, and it's going to be exciting. Sounds terrific. Yeah. Again, and remember, Bayfest is free, and a sneak preview. Not only are we having Mr. Belvedere, we've told you about that with our Channel 3 25th anniversary. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take a little minute here to sure. promo. <laughs> also, Spencer Christian of Good Morning America, and a new, new excitement, Candace Cameron of Full House is going to be here as well. Okay. Kurt Cameron's little sister, mm -hmm. she's going to be with us on our big uh, Friday night 25th anniversary for Channel 3 on our okay. stage in the Water Garden. So after you visit that, Dance to Johnny D, you can go on over to the product fair. You'll be there at night as well. Yes, uh -huh. All right. we'll be uh, um, the same hours as Bayfest itself. So. Good. Well, congratulations. We're well, glad to see you. that happen. Thank you very much. We'll be back as we tell you about Hank's the Cow Dog and why the author of the book is coming to South Texas. not performing to your expectations in school. My son had problems with his schoolwork, but with the help of Chancery Learning Center, he has shown much improvement. The certified teachers at Chancery Learning Center diagnosed Tim's weaknesses and developed a personalized one-on-one -on -one program of instruction. Tim's confidence in grades improved as he mastered new skills in reading, writing, and comprehension. Chancery Learning Center worked for us, and it'll work for you. They guarantee it. Chancery Learning Center in Pueblo Park Mall. Remember when you got full service with a fill-up? Caesars Texaco remembers. That's why Caesars Texaco checks all four tires and the spare, checks belts and fluid levels, vacuums the entire car and trunk, and even offers you a free cup of coffee, soft drink, or candy bar with every fill-up. Bring your car, van, suburban, or pickup to Caesars Texaco for a car wash, wax, and blow dry for only 50 cents. And try Caesars' new underneath washing system. Come to Caesars Texaco, your full service station. Caesars Texaco, airline and Alameda. The Creative Arts Center presents live performances back for a second season with four great shows for the entire family. Beginning Saturday, October 14th, ventriloquist Ron Lucas brings Buffalo Billy and his cascade of characters to Corpus Christi. In November, Jack Adams presents his incredible Merlin Magic Show. February brings Wind in the Willows, an action-packed comedy with unforgettable characters. And Don Oliver leads a musical journey through black music in March. Buy your subscription to all four shows for only $20. Call the Creative Arts Center today at 888-5692. Nissan is number one, and to celebrate this week, we're offering the number one selling import in its class, the Nissan Sentra, for only $59.99 or zero down, $129 per month. Drive home the tough Nissan hard body pickup, reduced to $67.95 or zero down, and $139 per month. Race away with the number one selling import sports car, the powerful 240SX, unbeatable at $12,999. And the most trouble-free car sold in America today is the Nissan Maxima, year for only $16,489. And it's Nissan, the best deals under the sun. Young and old love the books called Hank the Cow Dog. I know my son does. That's where I first met Hank. Uh, it, he's only 10, but we're joined by Betsy Sadler to tell us how John Erickson really appeals to many, really a variety of people. Why so? Why has his appeal been so broad-based? Well, you can take him on two levels. He appeals to the children just with the straight story, but if you look underneath the personality of Hank, it just it, it kind of cantankerous, but he's just Humphrey Bogart type of a hero, <laughs> and he just really appeals to adults as well, men and women. I've, I've known people that look like Hank the cow dog. It's that <laughs> eye. It's that wary look. You know, we won't <laughs> say who, but we all know that there are those in Corpus Christi that could be Hank the cow dog. But he really, he's a wonderful character. He's a good soul, right? Good-hearted fella. Yes, he's just, he's just fabulous, <laughs> and he's just so amusing, and there's so many other characters in the book mm -hmm. that also... Just about everybody can identify with one or more of the characters. Now, John Erickson is coming where and when, and, and actually, if you have a young or an older reader in your home would like to meet the author of Hank the Cow Dog, you can do that. Right. He's coming on Sunday, September 24th at 3 o'clock to the Henrietta Memorial Center in Kingsville, which a lot of people know it as the Ice House, hmm. and it's on 6th Street. Mm -hmm. And uh, this John Erickson, he's just a really amusing person. He does 
all the voices of all the characters. Oh. He's written 20 songs. He plays the guitar and sings lots of songs. And he's just a real personable guy. And he'll remain afterwards. We'll have all of the books available for sale. There's also T-shirts and posters and the cassettes. Mm -hmm. And he'll autograph any of the books. And they make wonderful Christmas presents. And it just, uh, I know his last, the 13th, the most recent book in the series, Hank and the Wounded Buzzard on Christmas Eve, mm -hmm. that would make a really neat Christmas gift for someone. And you could have the author personally inscribe the book. Oh, that's terrific. And keep in mind, so oftentimes it's hard to find books that are good for kids, particularly the age I'm looking for, which is like that 10 to 12, 10 to 13 age where the kids' books aren't quite quite right in the adult books aren't right. and this is evidently a great one Perfect. and it's wonderful and again you can benefit uh, is it the Clay Robert Clayburg Library or? right it's our public library in mm -hmm. Kingsville Robert J Clayburg Public Library and our organization is called the Friends of the Clayburg Public Library and we're a nonprofit group all our money goes straight to benefiting our library mm -hmm. one of our big projects uh, we had one of the very first in South Texas computerized card catalog systems. Good for you. And the Friends of the Library donated thousands of dollars towards this. So it's a very worthwhile And cost. how much is the charge, quickly, to it's enter? Free admission, free. Okay. but you do need to join the organization. Students, $1, adults, anywhere from $10 up. All righty, terrific. That's it. We hope to see you tomorrow. Good morning. Catherine's Wardrobe by Jack English for men and women. Paul York presents the fourth...